In this third video, we will see three more gizmo applications, the gauge, the controller, and the recorder. If you haven't seen the first video in the series, watch it first. It explains a lot about gizmo that we won't cover here. The gauge is a MIDI gauge or monitor. It provides information on all MIDI data coming into gizmo. Normally, the gauge doesn't pass any data through to MIDI out, so if you play a note on your controller, the gauge will tell you, but you won't hear anything on any synthesizers downstream. For example, you can change this by turning on bypass mode and pressing the back button. Now let's play a note. When you send a note on, note off, or polyphonic aftertouch message, the gauge displays the pitch at left. Oh, hang on, there we go. The pitch at left and the velocity or pressure at right. Directly below the pitch is the octave. There. Below that is the channel of the incoming message when appropriate. Here it's channel 1. Note that messages are restricted to Gizmo's MIDI in channel, but you can set the MIDI in channel to Omni to get all incoming voice data as well. Whether the message is note on, off, or polyphonic aftertouch is indicated with a pattern in these five LEDs in the second row. Take a look. There's on, there's off. Also, the three LEDs at the far right of the second row, which are presently not lit, will light when MIDI clock, time code, or active sensing messages arrive. That's the only information you'll get about them. Channel after touch looks like this. You can see an AT plus the value. Pitch bend looks like this. all 14 bits of it. Program change, channel control, RPN, and NRPN data get scrolling messages. For example, let's try some NRPN. I just sent an NRPN message there. Here's channel control. Last but not least, messages like system exclusive, song position, system rest, reset, start and continue, etc. cause the gauge to display a text message indicating their existence, and that's all. For example, here's SysX. Now let's look at the controller. The controller lets you set the middle and select buttons, and both of the dials, to any NRPN, RPN, CC, or PC value. For the dials, it's easy. You just specify the control type, and then the controller parameter number. For example, we, set the, we can set the vibrato in the Oberheim Matrix 1000 using CC1 on the left knob. Note that due to resolution limitations on the dials, only the MSB value will be sent, meaning that you can only send 7-bit values, not 14-bit values. Now let's set the select or write button to alternate between two program values when pressed. For example, let's go PC. Will the first program value will be the first program change value will be zero. And the second one will be forty-eight. How about that? For NRPN and RPN, you can also set the right button to, incre to do increment, and you can set the left button to do decrement. So let's try it out. Go to Go, play some notes. There's the Verado. Let's change to a different sound. Well, that was interesting. Another Oberheim Matrix 1000 bug to report. I'm sure Oberheim would be very interested back in the 80s.
Finally, let's look at the recorder. Like the step sequencer, the recorder makes good use of a click track, so let's set that up first before we go in. You can go to the Options menu, go to Click, and enter in a note. Now let's go to the recorder. First, you're going to be asked whether or not to load a song from a slot or to start a new song. Here it says, it's asking us if we want to load from slot zero and that there's already a recorder song there. Here, it's asking us if we want to load from slot one and it says that there's a step sequencer song there. Instead, we'll say we want a new one. Actually. The recorder can record roughly 64 notes spread over 21 measures, and then can repeatedly play it back. It's not a lot of notes, but perhaps it might be useful. Notes are recorded with pitch and velocity and are quantized to the nearest MIDI clock pulse. You can have no more than 16 notes playing at any one time. I hope you don't have more fingers than that. As you record or play notes, a little cursor will appear in the top region of the screen to indicate roughly where you are in the song. It's this one right here, which is presently saying we're at the very beginning of the song. Further down, roughly in the bottom two thirds, another cursor counts off the 21 measures one by one, and again it says we're in the first measure. The LED at the bottom left of the screen is the status. Here our status is stopped. If we're recording, this changes to the third LED. If we're playing, it changes to the second LED. We'll start recording. You can do that by long pressing the middle button. Recorder will do a four count, a four click count in. I stopped by pressing the click button again. The middle button toggles between stop and play. To hear our song, we just press the middle button again. There's a nice mistake I made. As you notice, it repeats. To give you an idea of how small 64 notes are is, let's re-record with some chords. And we're out. We're out of space. You save your song by pressing the select button. Here, we're going to resave it in slot zero, overriding the previous one. Press the select button again. Oh, we already just did there, and we're done. To get out, you just press the back button as usual. Yes, we're sure. Press it again. And that's the recorder.